Susan White was not sitting on the edge of her bed, pointing a gun at McGowan. His story takes yet another blow when investigators interviewed Susan's family. This policeman, McGowan, was saying that this was self-defense and that Susan had a gun. So I don't know why, but my first question was, what hand was the gun in? McGowan said and demonstrated how Susan White raised the gun and pointed it toward him with her right hand. I said, no. I said, Susan is very left-handed. She plays golf with the left hand, plays tennis with the left hand, drinks coffee with the left hand. What I think was in her hand was probably a telephone. With all the forensic evidence, prosecutors were armed with enough information to charge McGowan with murder. In February 1994, Deputy Joseph Kenton McGowan went on trial for murder in the shooting death of Susan White. At the first trial, one of the most amazing parts was that this thin blue line absolutely snapped. And one after another, I believe it was eight officers got on the stand and said Kent McGowan was not to be believed. In the case of Kent McGowan claiming self-defense, it appears that it didn't fly with the jury because once they determined that part of his story is untruthful, then they have less reason to believe that the critical part, that is, I fired my weapon because I was afraid she was going to kill me, that is, Susan was going to kill me. Once they decide that the rest of his story is a lie, their reason to believe him on that issue is substantially diminished. And apparently they did not believe him. In March 1994, Kent McGowan was found guilty of murder and sentenced to 15 years in prison. But to the shock of the jurors, McGowan was eligible for an appeal bond. The uh, jurors at the first trial didn't know that Texas had a law at the time that said that in any trial, any felony trial, anyone who's given 15 years or less is eligible to be out on an appeal bond while his, his or her case is going through appeal. So if they had come back with a judgment of 15 years in one day, Kent McGowan would have gone immediately to jail. The fact that they came back at 15 years meant that he was automatically eligible for an appeal bond. He was granted the appeal bond and he didn't have to go to jail until the appeals were settled, which turned out to be an incredibly long period of eight years. In February 2000, to the shock of Susan White's family, the appeals court reversed McGowan's conviction because of a technicality. The case would have to be retried. When we return, investigators discover a shocking confession in the secret diaries of Kent McGowan's lover.